All right, what's going on you guys? Uh, finally back with part three of my vinyl collection videos. Um, really sorry it took this long. I mean, these have been kind of taking up a lot of time just trying to getting these in here and getting them, you know, set up the way I wanted them to be and then kind of getting rid of all the useless shit I have in here because I got a fuck done. Like I said in that last, in that, uh, you know, when I did the video for these, it's like you really don't realize how much fucking useless crap you have until you start doing something as simple as bringing it into a shelf, so... It's been kind of hectic lately trying to get all this crap, you know, reorganized and get it set up the way I wanted. So that's partially why it's been so long I'm doing these videos. Between that and just being lazy, plain and simple. Uh, so yeah, uh, we'll hopefully start cranking these back out again. That's that's definitely the plan. I didn't mean to get so slack on doing these videos. Uh, using a new light, I got uh, some LED light bulbs to check out, see if it works a little bit better. Maybe it's not so orange on these videos. Um, Probably at some point I'm going to try to work with like a maybe a little homemade uh, light diffuser. Maybe try to soften the shadows. I can see quite a bit of shadows here in the background. So that's that's the plan going forward anyway as of now. Um, so let me know what you think if it's if it looks a lot better. I'm, I'm that's what I'm hoping for. So it can't be any worse than that damn orange. So I would imagine it's a little bit better at least. Definitely let me know about that. Uh, I'm also planning on. Um, maybe changing the upload day i've been doing it on tuesdays and i know it's it's kind of crazy it's crazy for me all the time you know we're always busy during the week so and that's getting right towards the middle of the week so everyone's stress levels are going up uh i don't know if that affects your viewing or anything but i just thought saturdays maybe be a, may be a better day for you guys um so i'm just probably going to upload this video on saturday let me know what you think about that that's like the main important thing i just want to know what kind of works for you guys um so i know i seem to really be on youtube quite a bit during the weekend so if that works for you let me know uh i will shut up and uh we'll get to talking about some uh, music here i don't think i had anything else to say anyway listening to shroud of satan of evil descent uh kick-ass german black metal this is their uh, newest release from 2018 another one that i just kind of missed the ball on when this was coming out so really excited to have this one and uh, I'm planning on doing a can't even talk today. Planning on doing a review of this here soon, so you'd definitely be seeing this one again. Uh, and let me know too if, like, when I hold an album up, if it kind of fucks the light up or anything. That's kind of what I'm a little worried about. At least when I was testing this out, it was kind of looking shitty. But I, I honestly think it's where I didn't let the light bulb warm up. Whatever. Uh, the first one I got for you is uh, a really good album. Really cool uh, French black metal. And uh, it's, I don't know why there's not more people talking about this band because uh, they put out some really, really killer material. And, uh, well, I'll get to it in a second. This is uh, Celestia. Uh, if I can pronounce this correctly, uh, Apparitia Assumptious Spectre. Um, it's pretty much along the lines of like mutilation. So, I mean, if you're into that, it's, I don't want to say it's the same thing. I mean, they kind of put their own spin on it, but it's very reminiscent in both in sound and style. Uh, just very, very similar in that regard. Um, and I know, I think, uh, when this band split up, this is their, actually, their last full length while they were a band. And this might have even been released, uh, posthumously. No, 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 I'm sorry. This is their debut. I'm, I'm a fucking idiot. Um, this particular version of it was released later on. But, uh, I know the band split up and went on to start, uh, Mortiferia. Um, which is pretty much actually going on at the same time that this band was around. So I'm pretty sure they've continued it, uh, which is also pretty similar, maybe a little bit more depressive on that shit than this. Um, but I can understand people being turned off by this because, you you know, you have songs like, you know, The Awakening of the Dormant Fiancé. It's like, you know, it's, it sounds like some love shit or whatever. Um, what else do we have? Uh, Perverted, Decadent, Dying Love. You know, it sounds like some fucking, I don't know, emo fucking goth shit like morbid romance that's what it makes me think of is like some weird goth shit uh, my one complaint about this is this fucking uh uh gloss on here it just i hate this reflective crap it would look so much better if it was just a straight matte and i'm i don't know how well you can see it but i'm certainly leaving fingerprints all over it but i don't know it's just whatever i mean packaging i don't knock too much typically well yeah i do that's just being me um comes with actually a, a really nice booklet and uh i don't have a lot of stuff like this um you know, i mean i have a few albums that have these and i know they're not that uncommon but at least in my collection i just don't have a lot of them so it's really nice to have and uh you know you just got lyrics and shit like that just flip through a few pages of it for you 
not too much to that. And uh, the record itself, I believe it's on a black with like a um, like a uh, gold splatter, if I'm not mistaken. Oh, yeah, there you some bitch. I don't know how well you'll be able to see it. You can kind of see it on there. But yeah, man, if you're a fan of mutilation, there's no reason not to like this. Uh, don't let the romance and the uh, you know the odd song titles kind of throw you off on it because it's. I mean, you would put this on not knowing the song titles, and you would never know the difference, honestly. Uh, really, really cool album. There's, I think they have three other full lengths. They've done a lot of splits and stuff. Um, and like I said, they've got uh, Mortiferia going right now. I do have the poster for it that comes with this album, but it's hanging up over here. Uh, before I moved off the shelves and shit, it was sitting right in here somewhere, so I'm sure you've seen it. And uh, yeah, man, really cool shit. I just wish more people were talking about it. That's kind of a big reason why I really wanted to show this one for sure. Not just because it comes, you know, next alphabetically, but awesome, awesome stuff. Uh, next one, we got the first 7 inch of the whole collection. Uh, one of my favorite ones, actually. Um, I would say it's, it's definitely up there. I mean, there's there's one in particular that I know you guys have seen me talk about forever, but we'll get to that one when we come to it. But uh, this is a split with uh, Crucified Mortals and Exorcism. Uh, this is actually really cheap through Hell's Headbangers. I'm not sure if they have any more left. I would imagine they should. I mean, I think I got this for maybe five bucks. Um, so yeah, really cool seven inch. So you've got, you know, uh, Crucified Mortals with their kind of like almost deceased worship thrash. Um, really fast you know it's, it's definitely got that same kind of vibe like you would have on your C shit not extremely fast but whatever and uh with exorcism uh you've got like some lo-fi death metal pretty much um i'm trying to remember where exorcism comes from uh shit uh damn it i thought i wrote that down but i guess i didn't um anyway i mean it's really cool stuff i want to say germany maybe maybe it says in here I could have checked this beforehand. This this me not doing fucking research. Um, I might be totally wrong about this, but I'm, I'm going to say Germany. Somebody correct me on it. I know you guys will. Uh, but yeah, man, uh, you've got fucking Reaper with Crucified Mortals, who's been doing this band forever. This is basically his baby. Uh, he's played with Nunslaughter, Necrofilth. Uh, he's got the Hellcast shit going on. The uh, Reaper Metal Productions shit going on. Um, played with uh, fuck, Spawn of Satan, I think. Um, yeah, all kinds of shit going on. And uh, Ash from Faith Extractor, I'd completely forgotten he was in this band, so all kinds of variables kind of coming together to do this shit. Um, with the Exorcism side, there's a, it's mainly like a mid-tempo mid style of death metal. I mean, not a ton of speed. Uh, there's blast beats here and there, but not too much. I mean, it's just pretty much a raw recording, which gives it a, you know, it's, it's, it, it's that good kind of, you know, just a lo-fi vibe, which I really love. Uh, I think they recorded it straight up on an 8-track analog, uh, which I'm fairly certain they wrote it down in here somewhere. I know I've looked that up. So, yeah. Um, pretty much it on that. Uh, I believe at least one side of it, these songs are reversed. Let me go ahead and show you the vinyl. Which, I, I love this one. I think this is actually the first splatter vinyl I ever had. So it's kind of like this white with black splatter on here. There's the uh, Crucified Mortal side and the Exorcism side. And uh, with Exorcism, I think these songs are reversed. So you've got Failed Ex... Uh, fuck. Failed Ex... Humation. You know, exhuming a Body. I can't, I can't say the fucking word right. And uh, Through the Eyes of the Dead, which those are actually... Uh, they play in reverse order. So I guess somebody fucked up on the... Uh, you know, printing out the labels or whatever. And uh, there's another thing, too. I can't really play the Crucified Mortal side... Uh, at least the very beginning of it because it has this fucking lump of dead wax on here so I guess that was a, a fuck up maybe that's why I got it so damn cheap was because it had this fucking defection in it uh, but whatever it's still kind of cool I mean I I don't want shit like that but at the same time if I end up with it and it still fucking plays what's the big fucking deal so I'm happy with it uh, really cool release uh, if they still have it on there go check it out I'll leave links like I always fucking do and hopefully you can go find this cool shit uh, and this next one is one I talked about probably right towards the end of 2018. No oh, shit, I talked. I got this back in April of last year. It took me a while to talk about it, so uh, you, I'm sure you've seen this before. This is a uh, Cryptic Slaughter, Money Talks, their uh, second overall release. And uh, the reason I've left all this plastic and shit on here is because, as far as I can tell, this is an original pressing of this album. 
uh, which is really cool because uh, there's not much I can say about it. And a uh, little fucking snippet right here, you know, really lets me know that at least kind of helps that along. Uh, obviously, one of the uh, originators of you know the hardcore punk thrash crossover scene, uh, starting out in California and moving elsewhere. Uh, this one is the uh, Death Records version, which is a Metal Blade affiliate. And I can't remember if they're still around or not. I, I don't think they are. Uh, yeah, whatever. Uh, I mean, it was released the same day as the Metal Blade copy, so it's an original press, but there's a Metal Blade version and a Death Records version, so... Released the same fucking day, so what's the fucking big deal? Um, I'm, I'm honestly... I've thought several times about taking this plastic off just because it's ripped up so bad, but at the same time, I just I can't fucking do it. Um, I believe it just comes with like a lyric sheet. Let me get it out of here. I'm trying to be really really careful with this one because it's so fucking old. Um, yeah, and you've got the uh, you know the lyrics and the collage stuff, which I rave about all the fucking time. How I love shit like that. And I believe it just comes on black vinyl. And it does, but it's got a uh, a nice purple label, which. I think it looks really good on the black, so I'll go ahead and show it to you. Because in the uh, plastic record sheet, or uh, record sleeve, which I really like these actually. A lot easier to get in and out of than the paper ones. So the black with the uh, purple lo uh, label looks really good, I think. So, I mean, it, it's nothing too fancy, obviously, but you know, I just think that looks really, really cool. You know, the uh, Death Records logo really popping out at you like that. I just miss shit like that. You don't really see it as much as you used to. Which I can understand why, but at the same time, it's, I don't know. It's kind of got a uh, nostalgic feel for it, I guess. But yeah, man, uh, I know a lot of people uh, want to talk about their uh, first album being really good, and it is, but I, I really like this one as well. And uh, honestly, there's not a lot of Cryptic Slaughter I don't like. All right, how are we going to manage this? Fuck. You know what? Fuck it. We're going to do it later before I fuck something up. But yeah, man, a uh, really cool album. Um, it just kind of goes to show you, you know, that I like a whole lot of shit, so... There you go. And I'm kind of fumbling through this just because I had all this set up to review and uh, it's been like, I don't know, the shit's been sitting out ready to go for like five weeks now. <laughs> kind of way behind, obviously. Uh, next one, an album that, for the most part with this band's discography, I found a lot of their stuff really boring. I don't want to say it's bad music, it's just kind of... There's, you know, there's rep there's repetition and then there's, like, bad repetition. Like, you know, with black metal stuff, there's going to be repetition. But, you know, if you're repeating on a really good hook, there's no problem with it. But if it's just repetition, 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 it just gets boring to me after a while. And uh, with this band, there's a lot of it that's like that. But at least with the first album and this one, which is their most recent release, they did a pretty good job with it. This is uh, Dark Funeral. Uh, where Shadows Forever... What? Rain. I don't know. I always want to say we're shadows forever why so like i said between this one and uh, secrets of the black arts those are probably my favorites for sure when it comes to dark funeral stuff um i don't know man it's just they actually did a really good job there's not a lot of repetition there is but there isn't um you know it's it's actually got a lot of variety in it and lots of hook laden riffs i mean the tempo changes are good and i don't know it just kind of really helps the album flow um everything is done really really tight um fucking uh dominator's drumming is probably easily the most impressive thing on this album for me i mean he's so fucking fast and precise man which i'm sure it's probably sampled you know when he was uh doing the tracking and everything but i mean it just it's done so fucking well it just it's really really a high point for this album um comes on a really cool gatefold so you've got just lyrics in here nothing uh no uh lyric sheet or anything like that and uh there's actually a uh <clears throat> a lot of uh, vinyl variants for this album. Um, shit, what all was there? Uh, I think yeah, maybe what maybe there's just two or three. Um, so I ended up with the uh, red variant, which looks really good. I mean, the blue label is kind of off-putting a little bit, but the the red is fucking awesome. Now I don't know how you guys feel about it. Um, it's it's not really important, but it's kind of like for an aesthetic view, an aesthetic feel of it. I kind of wish I had the uh, the blue vinyl, which was actually limited a little bit more to 100 copies of those. This one's limited to 100, but yeah, fuck it's not, it's not that big a deal to get it. But I don't know, you've got an album that's so overwhelmingly blue like this, you kind of want the vinyl to be blue. And I've talked to a few people about that, and they seem to agree with me. It's not, like I said, it's not like a fucking deterrent or anything. Um, but I don't know, it's just kind of something I... 
thought I'd bring up, I guess. It's just fucking weird. Um, so not a big deal, but I mean, it's, I don't know, with something like this, it's so overwhelmingly one color, you know, it kind of would feel right to have it in that color or just a straight up black or white, really, because they just kind of go with everything. So the red's kind of just weird coming from this album. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. So there's Dark Funeral. Actually, a really surprisingly good album. This is their uh, latest from 2016, which I showed. Ah, fuck it. You can tell how long it's been since I've shown this one. Um, and now we come to one of my favorite Dark Throne albums. And the only one I have on vinyl, actually. This is uh, this beautiful thing, The Underground Resistance. Um, I don't know how... I assume most of you guys are really into Dark Throne. I don't know how you feel about their later material. I absolutely love their straight up black metal stuff, but when it comes to their, you know, their heavy metal, their speed metal, that kind of shit, this one's probably, it's one of my favorites for damn sure. Um, I've listened to this fucking hundred times. I uh, just can't get enough of it. Really love the dueling vocals on here between uh, Ted and uh, fucking Penders. I just think they really do a good job in it. Between, okay, where you're alternating every single track in terms of doing vocals, it really helps the album to flow a little bit better. Um, so you've got, you know, Ted's kind of a little bit more harsh, and you know, Fenner's will kind of do his vocals, but then he'll throw in the you know, the falsetto vocals every now and then, which is fucking great. Does a great job with it. Um, I don't know, man. It's just a really good, really fun album. Flows really well. Love looking at all these photos and stuff in here, reading all the lyrics. Uh, just fucking great, start to finish. I mean, it just, you know, the way they construct every song, just it's got its own shape and character and. You know, uh, like I said, Fender's breaking out the falsetto stuff every once in a while. It's just it's just great start to finish. Uh, between the ones you left behind and Leave No Cross Unturned are probably my favorites, which are both Fender's songs uh, vocal-wise. No knock on Ted's songs. I mean, he does a great job. It's just those are just my fucking favorites. So, um, so like I said, it's on a gatefold. comes with a poster, which is right here. And... Uh, out of everything I moved when I was doing all the shelves, that one and my Campbell poster are the only ones that kind of stayed, so it's kind of weird. Um, the uh, I love the uh, record jacket, by the way, so you've got Banks and stuff on both sides from Fenris and Ted. Ted's pretty much straight to the point, short and sweet. Uh, and then uh, here's where they put all the, uh, I guess because they had room, so they put all the credits right here, you know, which is kind of funny. So over here, Fenders could thank every damn body and, you know, promote some bands, which is really, really cool. It's actually where I found out about Gouge when I picked this album up from uh, Norway. So really cool stuff, and he was talking about doing it on every album. In terms of the later stuff, which I don't have a lot of the later stuff, I'm not sure if he's kept this going. I kind of hope he has. So, And uh, the record is just on black, uh, but they have uh, all the logos and stuff are on a uh, nice red. So it looks really good. Yes, fucking sir. Um, but yeah, certainly the earlier stuff would be my favorite, but uh, when it comes to later material, this one is definitely up there for me in terms of some of my favorite Dark Throne releases. And it's just packaged so well, it just makes it even better looking. Which I don't know how I feel about all the brown, it'd be all, my only real knock on it, but whatever. There's uh, Dark Throne. Alright, we got shit. Three left. I'll try to get through this before we get to 30 minutes, I don't want it to be too damn long. Uh, we have another one from 2016. This is uh, Death Fortress. Uh, shit. Deathless March. What was it? Uh, of the Unyielding. I don't know why I can never remember this. They always have like the something of the something. You know, that's kind of their whole mantra. Uh, I believe this is their second album? First or second album? Uh, no, it's their second one. Uh, this one came out on uh, Fallen Empire, like I said, back in 2016. Uh, it's to me, it's like black metal with a really fierce edge to it. You know, it borderlines on death metal. I mean, there's a lot of blasting going on in this. Uh, but at the same time, they really kind of keep the, you know, the, you, the basic ingredients of black metal in here. You've got the really kind of brooding, um, you know, dark, really dark riffs and shit like that. I mean, it just kind of brings it all together. So, I mean, I mean I'm mean, i not saying that you don't have blasting in uh, uh, fucking black metal, but here they... They really do a good job of kind of blending the two in a different way that's not been heard all that much, I think. So I just really think this, this particular style is really done well. I'm noticing that uh, blue is kind of giving me some orange. Oh, well, uh, nothing I can do about it. Uh, drumming's fucking superb. The blaster on point. Uh, all the feels really add to the song structure without taking anything away from the riffs. I mean, just an absolutely complete package. Uh, awesome shit. I believe this band's out of fucking... Uh, 
New Jersey, I want to say. Um, really similar to, I don't know, shit like fucking Eternus or something like that. Uh, lyric sheet is just this and absolutely nothing else. I, mean, I believe the record's just on black vinyl. And I've got, like, fucking two other albums out that I still need to pick up, so... You know, I'll get around to them eventually, I guess. There's so much shit out there. Um, sorry that I'm fucking completely fumbling through this one. This has been one that I hadn't listened to in a while. And uh, I listened to it a good two or three times, getting ready for this video. And then, like I said, I didn't get around to doing the video till just now, once it's been four or five weeks. But, yeah, still, really killer shit. I mean, it's it's one of those, it's, it's almost like a hypnotic type of album. It's kind of, I don't want to call it off-putting, don't get me wrong. It's just kind of, it's very different. Uh, but then the more you listen to it, the more it really starts to draw you in and kind of really sets a mood. It's just a great fucking album. Alright, I need some drink. Mm -mm. I'm on a damn watermelon kick from fucking over now. I have no idea why. It's just like, I want some watermelon shit. That watermelon freeze at Taco Bell. Woo! Good shit. Uh, next we have our second picture disc of the whole collection, and this one's actually got a lot of packaging to it. This is fucking amazing shit. Uh, Death SS, the Cursed Concert. I know I showed this one not that long ago. Um, some, I don't know, it's like kind of hard to, to describe. It's like doom and speed metal with like some traditional metal mixed in. Uh, really similar to like Run After 2, uh, if you're familiar with that. Uh, it's, it's kind of like that transition between, you know, traditional heavy metal and starting to get up there into the little bit more extreme stuff. Like, um, and it's, it's, that's basically the best way I can describe it. Uh, I believe this is limited to, I forget how many copies. Oh, sorry, it's right here. 666. I got number 498. Yeah, this is just one I found in the record store one day. I was like, oh, fuck yeah, I'm picking this up. Um, and I'm pretty sure, like, the, uh, the guys from Mortuary Drape were really influenced by this band. And uh, so that's always kind of like uh, something interesting I found out about them. At least with their earlier stuff, I know. Um, just a really good piece of material if you're looking to get into the band. I mean, it features quite a bit of the, their best songs off their first three albums. Uh, this one came out in 1992. Uh, so it was, it's, it's actually done very, very well. Uh, whoever recorded this did a great fucking job on it. So there's the record itself, which I've probably could have held off for a minute, but whatever. And it comes with, um, well, I'll get to it. It comes with a poster, which I still haven't found a place to put up yet, but now that I've, you know, kind of made some wall space, I guess I kind of do now. And it's just, uh, sorry, just a them playing live. Probably need to frame this one, honestly, it's just fucking great. And, uh, we've got this, um, Get your inner sheet here, if I can get the fuck out of here. I don't know why this always wants to stick in here. It gets stuck in the corners. And uh, all it is is just fucking another collage of band photos and them doing some naughty things with uh, some woman. Some big old lady here. So you can pause the video and check that out if you want to. But yeah, in terms of picture disc, this one is definitely the, uh, the best package out of everything I have. I'm actually going to leave this poster up, so I'm going to go ahead and frame it. Or at least hang it up somewhere. Um, but yeah, man, it's, it's like I said, if you're wanting to uh, check this band out and start to get into this band, this would be a good starter point for you. Um, just they, they play a lot of, you know, in terms of going back and listening to their first three albums, they play a lot of those songs, and uh, a lot of them are some of my favorites from this band. So uh, definitely want to start there. Here's a good starting point is what I'm trying to say, and I'll say it eventually. But yeah, absolutely top-notch stuff. I mean, in terms of the recording, the bass is clearly audible, which is kind of shocking um you know the drums sound really good the vocals come through really clean the guitars aren't overwhelming like i hear in a lot of uh you know live concert type of you know type of recording so it's it's actually very balanced and it's it, whoever mixed it did a great job on it so uh definitely go check this one out if you can get around to it if you can find it anywhere all righty last one we're only 24 minutes in so kick ass and um uh, it's one of my favorite death metal bands of all time. One of my favorite albums they've ever put out. Um, you can say what you want about the first two. I fucking love those albums. And the one that comes after this one. But I don't know. It's really, really hard like it is for me. Like when, when talking about Cannibal Corpse. If I'm going to rank the first four albums from them. This one's not quite as hard. But it's still pretty hard for me. 
Uh, Dia said, "What's upon the cross?" Well, what can you say, man? It's it's all these songs. Not all of them, but most of these songs on here, they're still playing live. They're still fucking classic songs. They're still crowd favorites, and they're still nailing them to this day. Um, in terms of groove and just fucking the sheer amount of hooks and riffs that they are putting out in terms of their entire history, this has got to be up there with one of their best albums in that regard. Uh, the production on this, fucking phenomenal. Um, this is probably my favorite drum sound that I've heard in a recording. It's it's definitely up there. Uh, there's some more albums that I could probably go through and really nitpick in terms of drums, but this one is it, it's one of the better ones I've ever heard. I mean, the fucking uh, Steve's fucking snare hits sound like a goddamn rifle going off every time. I mean, it's very precise. And again, they're probably triggering the drums, sampling it, and all that kind of thing. But it, it still sounds fucking great. Um, I mean, what do you got? Fucking Once Upon a Cross, still played today. Christ Denied every once in a while. Uh, when Satan Rules His World, Kill the Christian. They're the uh, Children of the Underworld. Behind the Light Thou Shall Rise, Confessional Rape. I mean, just great, great fucking songs. My only knock with this particular version, which this is a... Uh, forget which one this is. Um, I believe it's the 2011 release, which it's on, uh, it's on Roadrunner, so it's kind of, I don't understand why they fucking fuck this up. The only thing that comes with it is this, uh, you got the inner sheet, uh, with the lyrics and everything, which doubles as the record sleeve, which there's really nothing to it, except for the labels, if you want to check those out. And it's the same on both sides. But I don't know how they fucked this up. Because the whole thing about this album, which is this, the original censored cover, or sorry, this is not the original cover, this is the censored cover, is how do they fuck this up? You've got it on the CD and pretty much every other version, but you don't have it on here with the fucking Jesus autopsy. I, I don't know how you fuck that up. This is like, you know, one of the reasons you open up this album, it's like, oh, what's under that fucking sheet? Let's buy the record and find out. Oh, holy shit. So, I mean, I don't know what the fuck they were thinking. It's, it, it doesn't kill the fucking album for me. I mean, god damn it. You know, art is not going to make or break it. It's just, you know, one of my little nitpicks that I seem to have to throw out of, after reviewing any album. But anyway, um, obviously the first four Deicide records are some of my favorites ever in terms of old school death metal. Um, and this one's absolutely no exception. Uh, really hard to rank them. I don't know where I'd even put them. Probably going to put Legion and DSI at 1 and 2, but... Uh, I don't know, man. Between this one and uh, Serpents of the Light, it was still a really good album, so it'd be hard to pick between those two. So, Awesome fucking shit. So there it is. Sorry for fumbling through this damn video. I know it's it's been shit, but... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to do another... Uh, sorry, my nose is itching. I don't know if I'm going to do another vinyl video next, or because I've got quite a few CDs and tapes that I really need to get to and do reviews of those, so... We'll just see where it goes. Uh, let me guys know. Let me guys. <sighs> you guys let me know how you feel about the light and, you know, the uh, Saturday uploads. And uh, I'm going to get off here. <laughs> I'll make this even worse. So thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you want to see any of these other final videos, I'll leave the links in the description. And eventually I'll have them in a playlist. So uh, thank you guys. I will shut up now.